Hey friends, Ashley here with Crazy Brave Homeschool. Today I'm gonna to be talking about how we DIY our science since our science curriculum this year was a flop. So what I wanna do is show you guys some of the resources that we generally use for our science units, which we do once a week. I have a first grader and a pre k -er, so I find that um, once a week really suits them. It suits our homeschool this year. So I wanna show you some of the resources that I typically go to each week, and then I'm gonna show you like a little mini day in the life of one of our science lessons. Okay, so I'll tell you guys um, sort of like the loose curriculum that we do use for science. Um, while our science curriculum with Blossom and Root was um, kind of a flop, there are some units in this earth science program that, um, that we have liked, and there are some units um, that we are gonna be doing through the rest of our school year. Um, so most of this was earth science, which, you know, a lot of the topics were a little dense for my first grader, like the rock cycle and um, plate tectonics and water cycle, um, things like that. But there were a few things that she was really into, like crystals and um, like the weather we're going to be doing, hurricanes, rainbows. Um, we did a great fossils unit. So there were a couple things in here that we did like. So I'm still keeping this around for us to dabble in. One thing that Blossom and Root has that we've really enjoyed this year are their book seeds issues. So each grade has a bundle of book seeds that are um, all like, like scientific inquiry that are based on a piece of literature, like a piece of living literature. Um, so we got the first grade bundle and um, th this is just two, it came with five or six, maybe six. And this is just an example. Uh, this was one that we did on the Galapagos Islands um, and a bit of Charles Darwin uh, based on based on a book. Charles Darwin's Around the World Adventure. That's the book. And then um, this was one that we did. Um, we really love, wait, yeah, we really loved this one, Solving um, solving the Puzzle Under the Sea, which was all about Marie Tharp's um, mapping the bottom, of the, the bottom of the ocean floor and discovering the continental drift and, and all that. Um, so this one was really fun. I'm not exactly sure why the book seeds have been so much better for us than Blossom and Root Science Program. Um, maybe because there's just so much more involved. Um, a lot of the activities are really hands-on, super creative. Um, there's like games and recipes, and those are some things that I found the science program kind of lacks. And it just seems like there's even more information here. We really like the book seeds. We're definitely doing this again for second grade. We're gonna get the second grade science book seeds bundle. Another thing that we do um, that's sort of loosely built around curriculum is um, when I realized that Blossom and Root was not really going to work out, we got a subscription to Mystery Science. Um, so this has been great. My kids are, you know, visual learners. They really like the videos. So each week um, I will base whatever topic I've decided to explore that week, try to find a, a correlating mystery science video. And um, we will do that. Sometimes there are activities paired with Mystery Science, um, which is great. Some of those activities are cool. Um, some of them are, are a little too based around like paper, you know, like paperwork, which we don't totally love in our homeschool. Um, but the Mystery Science videos have been awesome. Will I do the subscription again next year? I'm really not sure. I feel like Mystery Doug is great, but my kids might get a little burnt out on it if we do it for a whole nother year. So I do have new plans for second grade science. I don't think we're gonna need Mystery Science, but when Blossom and Root was a flop, Mystery Science came in, kind of saved the day. And, you know, I just kind of, I just kind of thought about the things that my kids are interested in scientifically, which is mostly um, biology. It's mostly animals, living science. So I went through and I tried to plan out the whole year for each week what we were going to study. Um, yeah, and then go from there. So the steps that I go by for each science unit 
have typically been, I'll, cho I'll choose my topic. I will find a video for it, either with Mystery Science or YouTube. Um, I will typically pair an activity with it, some kind of activity. Um, we will choose a book. Um, I will usually go to the library to choose like a picture book or a living book um, that I think will engage my kids more than say like a textbook kind of book. Um, and then my daughter will fill out her science log. So that's pretty much the, that's pretty much all the steps to our science unit. Um, it doesn't feel like too much. It feels perfect for a first grader and a four-year-old. Um, so no, we don't really have the experiments. Like some of the mystery science has experiments and that's great. So I appreciate those weeks, but we are definitely not an experiment heavy science this year. So to just show you a couple of the resources um, that we use, and I will show you, sorry, just the, one last thing. Um, we didn't use Blossom and Root much, right? But they did have a, a science log that I was able to use. So this is the last thing that I'll have my daughter do each day. Um, I will use this log to write whatever topic we studied. This week we did tide pools. And then I'll have her draw a picture of what she learned about tide pools. And then uh, most of the time I will narrate what she has learned. And then sometimes I'll have her write part of it. Um, but most of the time I just narrate most of it. And um, sometimes we'll do a little bit of this kind of thing, like the anatomy sort of matching. Um, but yeah, mostly it's just, just drawings. Okay, and so then the homeschool resources that I go to when building a unit are, you know, whatever books that I have, obviously, on hand. I have a lot of our units organized into these, like, file folders. I've showed, showed it in past um, videos. And so say we're doing something about the ocean, like whales, I'll go to my little unit um, portfolio and see if I have any books or resources on whales, and I'll pull from there. Um I will always utilize our library. I'll go on there and try to find like a living book that I think represents the topic really well and that's gonna engage my kids. But there are a couple of staples that I tend to go to each week. So one being um, our microscope. Um, we don't use this every week, but this is definitely a staple, you know, obviously. Uh, it's a digital one, which is great for my kids. I do hope eventually to get a manual one, but this is great when they're young. Um, we have this huge magnifying glass that I got on Amazon and it's cool. It has a stand so you can stand it on the table and observe your specimen. It also has, um, like four different light features. This doesn't look like it, but this is actually really, really bright, um, which is kind of neat. So we've got our mic, our, ow, our, um, <laughs> pinch myself, our magnifying glass. And then, um, I have two books that I tend to go to as often as I can. So Slow Down is one of them. Uh, I love this because it's kind of a nature study and it's really easy to digest because each topic is just a two page spread. I've talked about this in past videos. I love this book a lot. It just feels so appropriate for my kids ages. Um, and it really seems like everything we're studying this year, I can find uh, spread on. Like, I almost would have thought that I had gone through this to choose my topics because um, almost every week there's been a spread on our topic. So we love Slow Down. I got mine from Beautiful Feet Books. Um, it might be on Amazon. Another one that um, we've used several times is this migration book, Incredible Animal Journeys by Mike Unwin. Uh, this again is a two-page spread, which I just love. Anything to keep it super simple. So we've used this for um, butterflies, whales, sharks. It's, yeah, it's just, it doesn't have a whole lot of reading because I'll usually use this or slow down in addition to whatever book that I've chosen to read that week. And I thought I was gonna show you more. Like I almost showed you, you know, Julia Rothman's collection, which, you know, us homeschoolers are pretty familiar with Julia Rothman. But I felt like that would be sort of a lie. We actually don't use those books that much. Like I always have one, I have the whole series um, and I always put one out with our unit study, but oftentimes we just don't go to it as a reference guide. I think it's too small and chunky. I can't get the pages to stay open, like to display anything. Um, and my kids haven't shown any interest towards those books yet. 
I love those books and I think that they will be like a concrete, you know, I think that they really will be a staple to our homeschool um, in the coming years, but they just haven't been books that my kids have um, shown any interest in yet. So um, until then, migration and slow down for living science has been uh, our favorites this year. Okay. So I don't know. I don't think I missed anything. I didn't talk yet about my unit studies. I do really enjoy making like a beautiful display for our science unit. I don't just do it for science. Sometimes I do a language arts study that I set up. Sometimes it's like for Halloween or Valentine's Day. Um, and then sometimes I do it for our geography unit. But oftentimes I use our little unit display area for our science unit. And even though we only do science once a week, I think this is a really great way to um, re-engage them by keeping it up all week long. So I'd say, you know, more often than not, once, maybe twice, they go to the unit, they see what I've put out. Um, it excites them to see like what's to come that week. And I try to usually incorporate some games like bingo, puzzles. There's always some coloring sheets. Um, yeah, so I like our little unit displays and it allows me to express my creativity and makes our home sp our homeschool space very charming. So for the last part of this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys like a little mini day in the life um, of our science unit from a couple weeks ago. Okay, so enjoy, I'll see you next time. to the table. Yep, they are gigantic. Blue whales are one of the largest, so we just read about the humpback whales, how they migrate. This is a blue whale. They are the largest, they're the largest creature on earth, aside from the sauropod dinosaur. Powered by a heart the size of a car, they are bigger than all of the dinosaurs except the sauropod. Fully grown blue whales are about 30 times heavier than an elephant, the biggest land animal alive today. But they are hard to find. Blue whales swim in deep water. They travel alone or in pairs across vast oceans, so these rare creatures are difficult to find. But if you head to the... Yep. So get them right up there. I really want to help. I don't know. I love that, Eddie. That's great. So we're going to put some paint right here. You want to glob it on. So you actually want to use quite a bit. You want to get more. And kind of make a big glob of paint right there. Okay. Let's do more. Which one is mine? This one, so mix it together. Hey, Bobby. More boo boo. Yeah, more. Let's do more. So get more over here, Woody. Right, there we go. Keep blowing. Yeah, keep, keep, keep going. Blow, blow really hard, Woody. I need some more. I need some more. <laughs> and maybe even angle. I think you need more paint, Woody. Mommy, get you. 